This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. The Jovian planets represent, in terms of their formation, an area that wasn't scathed, it remains sort of unscathed from the solar wind. The hydrogen helium envelopes that surround the small 2% other core still exist, making these Jovian planets in broad strokes, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, big. Jupiter being the largest of the Jovian planets, 318 times the mass of the Earth, 10 times its diameter. Saturn, 95 times the mass of the Earth. Uranus and Neptune in the teens, but still dramatically larger. Each of these planets as well is made mostly of gas. So what do they have in common? They're gaseous. Why? Because they never lost their atmosphere to the solar wind. Interestingly enough, each of these planets, with Saturn being the most extraordinary example, have rings. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune have faint rings. But Saturn's rings are the most pronounced, made of small particles orbiting around inside of Saturn's gravitational pull. In addition, each of these worlds has lots of moons. In the case of Jupiter, we may be talking about as many as 65 moons. Saturn, somewhere around 63. Uranus, 27 moons. Neptune, 13 moons. In fact, it is the collision of some of these moons which may create fodder for the rings to invigorate themselves, with Saturn being in full bloom. Saturn having the most pronounced rings of any of these objects. In addition, they have dynamic atmospheres. Jupiter is known to have the great red spot. For over 300 years, this hurricane-like storm has persisted and ebbed and flowed, but persisted. It's twice the size of the Earth, but it exists active in the atmosphere. Its heat wells up, and the rotation of Jupiter spins it up into this cyclonic storm. Storms like that have been observed on Neptune, and to a lesser extent on Saturn and Uranus as well. In addition, these worlds have been visited by a number of spacecraft, most, uh, most dramatically, the Voyager 2 spacecraft visited Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune before rocketing out of the solar system. Lastly, each of these worlds has a magnetic field. It turns out that even this far from the Sun, having a magnetic field is useful to deflect the minimal amount of solar wind that arrives. And in fact, they do have Aurora Borealis and Aurora Australis. What accounts for this is internally, not iron at the center, but some other conducting material. In fact, Jupiter and Saturn have an internal structure that has gaseous hydrogen and helium on the outside, a rocky 2% other core on the inside, but in between, we've got this layer of what's called liquid metallic hydrogen. Hydrogen under so much pressure that it takes on the qualities of a liquid metal, much like liquid mercury. And that circulating layer under pressure creates a magnetic field in both Jupiter and Saturn. In terms of what each individual, they have all these things in common, but what about each individual planet? What stands out? Jupiter has moons, the moon Io. The moon Io on Jupiter has, because of the gravitational pull of Jupiter, it has volcanism, more volcanism than the planet Venus. The moon Europa, slightly further away from Jupiter, has so much gravitational energy that it has 
a shell of ice with liquid water underneath. If you're looking for a place to have life in the solar system, this global ocean of water that exists on Europa may just be that spot. The planet Saturn has the moon Titan. A moon bigger than any moon in the solar system, a moon with an atmosphere made of nitrogen and natural gas, methane. The planet Uranus has a huge tilt, probably the result of some sort of large impact early in its history, creating extreme seasons. It also has a moon called Miranda, which looks to be taken apart and put back together like a puzzle. The moon Neptune, the moon of Neptune that stands most out is the moon Triton. Not Titan at Saturn, but Triton. So we've got Titan at Saturn, Miranda at Uranus, and Triton at Neptune. What distinguishes Triton is it has ice volcanoes. The gravitational pull of Neptune is so strong that it generates heat and creates ice geysers. So as we head to the outer solar system, we expect with the diminishing sunlight that things would get less geologically active, and yet because of the gravitational pull of these behemoths, we find evidence of plenty of geology going on. Some of you are probably thinking, what about Pluto? We don't know much about Pluto. The New Horizons spacecraft has recently flown by and taken some extraordinary images. We know that Pluto's icy crust is surrounded by a rocky mantle. We know that from its density. We know that Pluto has a couple of large, excuse me, it has five moons, but one very large moon called Charon that orbits Pluto in a tidally locked configuration where they orbit each other, keeping the two faces facing each other as they go around. What lies beyond Pluto are probably other smaller icy bodies, but we can't rule out the possibility that some larger Jovian type planet might have been pushed to the outer solar system and yet to be discovered. In fact, some recent data suggests that there may be something.